join us on Patreon and become part of our journey to uncover history's untold stories. Your support helps us create in-depth content, bring hidden narratives to life, and keep history alive for everyone. In the early 1900s, the world was obsessed with flight. Humanity had dreamed of soaring through the sky since the days of ancient myth, Daedalus and Icarus, the winged chariots of the gods, and the visions of Leonardo da Vinci's flying machines. But for all the fame given to the Wright brothers in their December 1903 flight, buried beneath the whitewashed pages of history lies the story of a brilliant black inventor whose work laid the mechanical foundation for the first airplane frame. His name was William Samuel Grant, a mind both ahead of his time and tragically obscured by the racial barriers of his era. At the dawn of the 20th century, when racial segregation dictated who could be educated, patent invention, or even step inside certain institutions, Grant's mechanical genius defied all odds. Born in 1868 in Providence, Rhode Island, to parents who were formerly enslaved, William S. Grant grew up in a time when the Reconstruction era was collapsing under the weight of Jim Crow laws. Yet, from a young age, Grant displayed an intense fascination with machines. The sound of gears turning, the click of metal parts fitting together, these were his symphonies. He apprenticed under a machinist in his teens and later worked at a small engineering shop that built early engines and bicycles, the latter being crucial to what would later evolve into the design of the modern airplane. By the 1890s, bicycles were the technological marvel of the day, and young inventors across America were experimenting with gliders and propellers. Grant noticed that the primary limitation wasn't propulsion, but stability and frame structure. Most inventors were trying to mimic the flapping of bird wings, while others struggled with the problem of weight versus lift. Grant's background as a machinist gave him a practical edge. He knew metal. He knew balance, and he understood how to design lightweight yet durable structures. This understanding led him to develop a unique lattice-style frame made of metal tubing that could maintain strength while remaining light enough to achieve lift, a radical concept at the time when most experimenters still used wooden cloth. In 1899, William S. Grant filed a patent for an improved airplane frame a structure that combined a tubular metal skeleton with cross-bracing designed to distribute weight and tension evenly across the wings. His design included a system of adjustable wing spars that could change angle for stability, ideas that predated modern ailerons. The patent, listed as U.S. Patent Number 638607, became one of the earliest documented mechanical frameworks for controlled flight. But despite its revolutionary nature, few at the time paid attention. America, still drowning in racial prejudice, had little interest in celebrating a black engineer's innovations. It is important to understand the environment in which Grant worked. The late 19th and early 20th centuries were defined by systemic racism in science and technology. Black inventors were frequently denied credit or faced obstacles registering patents. Many had to assign their rights to white investors or employers who could navigate the bureaucratic system. Even George Washington Carver, whose agricultural breakthroughs change America, was often dismissed by mainstream institutions until decades later. For Grant, securing recognition for a technology as ambitious as human flight was almost impossible. In 1902, Grant's patent was quietly examined by engineers in the field of aeronautics. Among those who had access to patent libraries at the time were Wilbur and Orville Wright. The Wright brothers had been running a bicycle shop in Dayton, Ohio, and were known to review contemporary patents for inspiration. Many historians have noted the similarities between Grant's 1899 frame design and the structural features of the 1903 Wright Flyer. Both used cross-bracing wire systems and lightweight tubular frameworks to support the wings. While no official record shows a direct acknowledgement, the timing and mechanical similarities are too close to dismiss as coincidence. Grant's design predated not only the Wright brothers' flight, but also several European advancements. In France, Clement Ader's Avion III and Germany's Otto Lilienthal gliders had achieved limited glides, but their frames were still largely wooden and unstable. Grant's metal framework offered a more modern, structurally sound solution one that would later become the standard in aviation engineering. 
His design principles anticipated what aeronautical engineers would adopt decades later. Lightweight metals, reinforced tubing, and stress distribution systems to handle aerodynamic forces. Grant continued to refine his inventions into the early 1900s. He built several scale models of his frame, demonstrating how the structure could withstand wind pressure and weight distribution tests. Lacking the financial means to build a full-size prototype, he approached investors in New York and Washington, D.C. for funding. However, his efforts were met with silence or rejection. One letter preserved in a private collection recounts a conversation between Grant and a potential white investor who dismissed the idea outright, saying that the colored man's place is not in the air, but on the ground. The tragedy of Grant's life mirrors that of many black inventors who worked in isolation, brilliance smothered by systemic neglect. Yet, whispers of his contribution survived in the periphery of early aviation history. In the 1910s, as aviation grew into an industry, engineers began using metal tubing frames inspired by earlier patents. When the U.S. Patent Office reorganized categories under aeronautical apparatus, Grant's 1899 patent resurfaced as one of the foundational mechanical designs of early flight. Though few textbooks mention him, those who studied the records found traces of his pioneering ideas woven into the DNA of modern aviation. Grant's career extended beyond aviation. He later contributed to designs in automotive mechanics and early engine systems. In 1915, he patented an improved engine lubrication device, a precursor to modern oil circulation systems used in aircraft and automobiles alike. His inventive mind was versatile, adaptable, and visionary. But fame never came. When he died in 1942, newspapers barely noticed. The headlines that year were dominated by World War II and the rapid evolution of aircraft technology. Ironically, technology that rested on principles he had first sketched more than four decades earlier. It wasn't until the late 20th century that historians began to rediscover William S. Grant's legacy. In the 1980s, aviation researcher Philip Nichols stumbled upon the 1899 patent while researching minority inventors. Nichols noted that the design bore uncanny resemblance to the early Wright Flyer's skeletal structure. Subsequent analysis by the Smithsonian's patent archives confirmed the authenticity and originality of Grant's submission. However, official recognition remained limited, partly because records of his prototype models had been lost, and partly because the public narrative of flight had long been cemented around the Wright brothers' image. The rediscovery of Grant's work reignited debates about how history chooses its heroes. How many other innovators, particularly people of color, were buried under institutional bias? The question extends beyond invention. It touches the very way society remembers progress. It challenges the myth that genius has a color and reminds us that technological revolutions are never the work of a single race, but of human curiosity itself. Grant's influence can be traced through the evolution of aircraft design. The tubular metal frame, a concept once dismissed as impractical, became the standard for modern aviation in the 1920s and 1930s. Companies like Boeing and Douglas Aircraft relied on variations of the same core principle Grant had proposed decades earlier. Lightweight metal frames reinforced by trusses and braces to maintain aerodynamic integrity under stress. The very idea that flight could be controlled and sustained depended on understanding these engineering fundamentals. Fundamentals Grant had already mapped out long before he could ever see them take off. His story also symbolizes the resilience of black innovation in America. Despite systemic exclusion from universities, research institutions, and patent boards, black inventors like Grant, Lewis Latimer, Elijah McCoy, and Granville T. Woods contributed to the very foundations of modern engineering. Their legacies remind us that progress is not a straight line, but a mosaic of brilliance often hidden in plain sight. Today, scholars argue that William S. Grant should be remembered alongside the Wright brothers, not as a rival, but as a vital precursor, a visionary who designed the frame upon which humanity learned to fly. His invention was not just a structure of metal. It was a framework of possibility built by hands that the world refused to see. When we look at an airplane today, its gleaming fuselage, 
its intricate skeleton of aluminum and steel, we are in some sense looking at the ghost of Grant imagination. Every time a plane lifts off the ground, defying gravity, it pays silent tribute to those like him, who dreamed of flight not for glory, but for the advancement of humankind. History may have tried to erase his name, but the sky remembers. And so the story of William Samuel Grant stands as a quiet rebellion against historical amnesia, a testament to the truth that innovation knows no race, no boundary, no color. Only vision, courage, and the will to rise above.